Let's translate Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Petros de pros avtus, metanoisate fisin, ke baptistito, ekasto simon epito onamati Jesu Christu, is afesin ton amartion imon, ke limpseste tin dorean tu agiu pnevmatos. And Peter to them, repent saying, and let each one be baptized, let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, in forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we have our post-positive day, and then Petros, Peter, to them. So Epen is apparently here, uh, but Fison actually takes its place. What does he say? He says, repent and let each one be baptized. So, repent. This is second person. This is third person. So, you, see, is implied here. That would be singular. Uh, but this is plural. And let each one of you, each one of you, be baptized. Baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins. For forgiveness of your sins. And And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Peter said to them, Repent and let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So right off the bat, we have this weird bracket thing going on. You, you can see it in red here. You can see it in black here. Uh, the brackets are because it's a textual variant, and the uh, the committee that decided upon UBS uh, 4 or Nestle Elan 27 in this case, I don't have the latest Nestle Elan 28 or the UBS 5, but the committee decided that it's a split decision. We can't definitively say Fison belongs, but we can't definitively say it doesn't belong. So the way it works is one uh, set of manuscripts, notably Vaticanus and a few others, including um, Augustine, apparently. It says, Prosoftos uh, meta noisate and does not have any verb of saying like fisin or ipen or, or anything like that. Another one uh, with Codex D or Codex Claremont Claremontanus, I think is what it is, plus uh, all, Irenaeus also in Latin. It says, Pros of tus fisin meta noisate. So this one includes fisin. Another manuscript, 1505, says pros avtus ipen meta noisate. Then there's uh, several others, E, C, the majority text, uh, even uh, a few of the, or the majority of the Latin Vulgate have effi pros avtus meta noisate. 
So that uses effie, another verb of saying. And then there's there's the one that's in brackets, which is pros avtus metanoisate fisin. And that's supported by Papyrus 74, apparently, plus Codex Sinaiticus. And then you've got Codex Alexandrinus, uh, Codex C, which I believe is Codex Ephraimi, plus uh, Manuscript 81, Manuscript 945, Manuscript 1175, Manuscript 1739, Manuscript 1891, and a few others, including uh, one of the Vulgate. So, in terms of textual attestation across the variants, it's really strong if you're just looking at early dating, plus P74 is a pretty good one, Sinaiticus is a pretty good one, Alexandrinus is, is decent. That's pretty strong to include Fison. But why does Vaticanus not include it? Vaticanus is about as old as the others in terms of uh, uh, like Codex Sinaiticus, for example. P74, interesting that it has Fison. But they, when, when the committee's working through these textual variants, they're not looking at what is the earliest, oldest version. That's certainly part of the decision-making process, which made this one so difficult because it has great support to include Fison. But the reality is what they're looking for is whichever variant can account for the others. And... There's no reason why Fison, Epen, or Effie would fall out. There's no reason why it would fall out. Because it really needs to be there. So it appears then that Vaticanus and a few other manuscripts, including Augustine, which does not include any verb of saying, would then be original or most likely to be original and account for the others because it's not there. It is it is missing what appears to be a verb of saying, right? And so it would make more sense then that a later scribe, a copyist, would add in a verb of saying like fison or epen or effi as opposed to have it there and take it out. Ah, oh, we don't need this verb of saying. No, no, we, we kind of do, because right now we have no main verb. So it, it does appear that in this case, Fison is not original. However, the committee did put it in and put it in brackets because it does actually bear really good textual support from the likes of Codex Sinaiticus, Papyrus 74, and so on and so forth. So the point is this. A... It's not a, a. It's not strictly about the earliest, oldest manuscript. Uh, you cannot stop textual criticism there. Uh, you have to also look at internal evidence. You also have to look at geographical spread. You also have to look at um, which variant can account for the others. You're not always able to tell, but in this case, it seems pretty apparent. For the sake of the translation, we're going to need a verb, right? We, we can't just leave it and Peter to them. That makes no sense. So from a translational standpoint, we're going to supply some sort of verb. In that case, we might as well use Fison. It has great textual uh, evidence. And Fison really means something along the lines of to say. So if we pull it up in BDAG here, it comes from Fimi. Fimi is to state something orally or in writing, say, affirm, and it's used with direct discourse, which is exactly what we have here. Plus, it's inserted after the first word or words of the direct discourse. So it makes sense that Fison is not before the semicolon, Petros de pros avtus, but rather after the first word of the direct discourse, which is metanoisate. So it's in the right place, but it's in brackets because uh, it probably doesn't belong. But in terms of a translational standpoint, we actually need it. Otherwise, we don't have a main verb uh, to communicate what Peter's doing to them. 
So Peter is saying to them, repent, metanoisate. This is second person plural aorist active imperative. So this, this is a strong command. He's saying, uh, change your mind, feel remorse, repent, be converted, something along those lines. Here you see Acts 2.38. Uh, so it's going to be translated along the lines of feeling remorse, repent, be converted. And let each one of you be baptized. Baptizo means to dip, uh, wash, purify, uh, to use water in a rite for purpose of renewing or establishing a relationship with God. So plunge, dip, wash, baptize. This is of the Christian sacrament of initiation after Jesus' death. So Jesus got baptized and was baptized by John. Water baptism, right, in the Jordan. What did Jesus need to be baptized for? Well, he was setting the example of what to do. And it was also a declaration of what he was about to do. Baptism is the dying and rising with Jesus. So Jesus was demonstrating what he was about to do on the cross at the culmination of his ministry by being baptized by John saying effectively i'm going to die but i'm going to rise again this is what we declare in baptism we have died with christ and we uh, have been raised to new life in christ and with christ and so all christians are commanded to be baptized and this is a water baptism. You dip. Uh, so in the Didache, it's either, you know, use whatever water you got. Um, in the Baptist tradition of which I'm a part, you full on submerge, submerge, you full on submerge. Uh, but that's what it's all about is this is, this is in response, in faithfulness to what Jesus commanded. Be baptized. Why? Because you are declaring that you are part of Christ, part of Christ's death and part of Christ's resurrection to new life. And so this baptism is in the name of Jesus Christ, not John the Baptist, in the name of Jesus Christ. And this baptism uh, is part of forgiveness of your sins. So and let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Is afesin ton amartion imon. Is. So this is a preposition and it's accusative. So it means into, in, toward. This is for um, an extension involving a goal or place. It could be an extension in time, to, until, on. Marker of degree, so up to. Marker of goals involving effective abstract suitability aspects, so into or to. It could be simply, um, in this regard, in order to. So it denotes purpose. So you are baptized in the name of Jesus in order to forgive your sins in order to so there's purpose here notice is afesin amartion for forgiveness of sins or you could translate it so that sins might be forgiven i'm going to leave it as in order to uh, but this is the point purpose in order that your sins might be forgiven now afesin here is not a verb it is a noun and it's aphesis aphesis so it can mean the act of freeing and liberating from something something that confine confines so this is release from captivity uh, or it can be the act of freeing from an obligation guilt or punishment this is pardon or cancellation so 
you, when you are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the purpose of that is to pardon your sins. This frees you from the obligation of your sins. The obligation of your sins is death, beyond physical death. This is a transcendent death, and Jesus Christ pardons that sin. When you have died with Christ and raised to new life in Christ, which is what baptism declares, then you have forgiveness. You have pardon from your sins. Subsequently, or perhaps it's better to say in parallel, when you are baptized, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So what's interesting is this is second person plural. Baptistito is not, but metanoisate is. So you could say that all three of these, repent, baptism, and receiving are the same. It's a, it's a triplet, triplet set of actions. I would probably argue that it's not. It's actually a, a doublet, metanoisate, and limpsaste go hand in hand. Baptistito is subsequent to the repentance, but not in parallel. But you know what? I could be wrong. The only reason why I say that is baptista. Uh, Baptistito is third person singular, whereas metanoisate is second person plural, and limpsiste is second person plural. So I think there's a parallelism there, but I could be overstating things and I could be wrong. In any case, though, you have repentance, be baptized, and receive. Now, this is not a command, limpsiste. This is indicative. So it's not that you repent and then you yourself receive as though you're doing anything. No. You're receiving as just part of reality. By repenting, you are receiving. And you're receiving the gift. Dorea, that which is given or transferred freely by one person to another. It's a gift. It's a bounty. And it's used of God. With the genitive, Dorean to Pnevmatos, receive the spirit as a gift. I'm going to translate this because this is a genitival phrase. So the direct object is teen doreon. And then we have uh, of the Holy Spirit. So you repent, then you are baptized, and then receive. It's not necessarily a sequence, but these are three things that happen you repent this is the command and here's also a command this is imperative but this is third singular heiress passive let each one of you be baptized you is still kind of the focus you you and you but because it's passive i think that's why it it goes around about in in a passive way here so receive, I'm sorry, repent, be baptized, receive. Then Peter said to them, repent and let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you liked this video, hit the like button, brush up on your Greek and Hebrew, and we'll see you next time.